Vietnam, the touching story of this couple's American dream, helping the forgotten victims they left behind. I wanted to do something to help. Thanks for watching Inside Edition today. Desperately to reach American helicopters. Well, for those who did get away and were brought to America, life has often been very difficult. But one man who has triumphed has never forgotten what he left behind. Joel Loy reports. Can I get, um, Only in America would you find Vietnamese running a Mexican restaurant. It's going to be spotless by the time you finish. Like most immigrants before them, Ka Van Tran and his wife Kim have been working towards the American dream. For the past 12 years, they've worked 15 hours a day, seven days a week. But this couple's American dream differs from most. Haunted by the images of the life they left behind, they've also devoted their lives to helping these forgotten victims back home. They still carry the physical scars of war, and now Kai is using his good fortune to ease their suffering. Ka Van Tran grew up in a South Vietnam that was always plagued by war. At the age of 17, he became an interpreter for the U.S. Marines in 1967. Five years later, he married Kim. Then, on April 30th, 1975, Saigon fell and everything changed. The incoming shell, artillery were bombing everywhere, uh, helicopters, everything coming out. That's the finale. It's, it's incredible. I would never experience anything like this ever in my life again. In the chaos, Ka and Kim boarded one of the barges along the river. Little did they realize they would not be returning. We don't know where we go. I thought maybe we get out to the boat and we come back later on, you know. And But I only got two, two pants and two shirts. No money. No money. Left behind was Kwa, their two-year-old son. I cried all day, all night. We are not unique. Many millions of Vietnamese families have the same situation. Thousands of fathers get even worse. Knowing their family would look after their son, they continued on their journey, thanks to the U.S. government. One week later, they found themselves in Springfield, Virginia, at this mall. Within moments, Ka was hired to clean the mall, which was also, for a time, their home. To get sleep, we turn the light off, take the, the bulb off to darken the room, and then cover the floor with cotton box and things, and go to sleep. It's where we came from, you know, we've been through hell, we've been through a very difficult time, so we kind of adapted to the situation. We know that it's going to get better. Better than they ever dreamed. Soon Ka was running the taco place down the hall, and soon after that he bought four Taco Amigo restaurants. By 1990, they were living here in Great Falls, Virginia, and had two beautiful children. But to this day, government red tape on both sides has prevented their elder son from joining them in America. To keep haunting, you know, it's, it's very difficult. I think soon um, he, he can come one way or the other. Four years ago, the family was finally reunited when Ka and Kim returned to Vietnam. Going back there and meet them for the first time after many years were this is a very very special experience after all these years but it was heartbreaking for Ka to see what had become of this country poverty that you never see anywhere else after returning to the United States you know I, I feel very guilty because all this image kept flashing back and forth in my mind. People with sufferings and all that. So I wanted to do something to help. 
Ka turned his energies and considerable amounts of his own money towards a humanitarian effort, providing prosthetic devices for victims of the war. In a way, it's the most effective way to rebuild the relation between the two uh, countries. And uh, it proves that it's working very, very well. 20 miles outside of Ho Chi Minh City is the Two Duck Clinic. Here, artificial limbs and wheelchairs are provided by VNAH, Vietnam Assistance for the Handicapped, started by Van Tran four years ago. For years, these people did without or with homemade devices. This is what they've been wearing out there for, for years until we show up. Six times a year, Ka returns to the clinic. On the day Inside Edition visited, we accompanied retired Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, Jr., who commanded our naval operations during the Vietnam War. He serves on the board of VNAH. We give the, the amputee two foot, two feet, two feet so he can take this off and put the different one so he can go into the rice paddy because this will stuck in the mud. Ah. What happened to you and, and how? Uh, step on the landmine during the war. These people are the reason Ka and his family work so hard. This man is just one of the 12,000 victims VNAH has helped. It's a drop in the bucket. Uh, it's significant, but uh, we got a long way to go. So for now, Ka continues his mission to help his former countrymen get over a war that ended more than 20 years ago and look to the future. He, too, is trying to do the same. I deal with Vietnam tomorrow. The minute if I sit down and think about Vietnam today, you know, it's, it's you know, frustrating me. So that's how I'm approach Vietnam. That's my approach tomorrow. Tomorrow give me a lot of hope. And Ka says there are more than 50,000 Vietnamese still waiting for artificial limbs, and he is trying to help as many as he can. Quite a guy.